We're here with Santos in Austin, Texas. Uh, Santos, how long you been in Austin? Four years. Four years? Yes. How'd you get here? Paroled out. My parole. Paroled out? Yes, sir. Did you parole straight to the streets? No, I went straight to ATC Center in Delaware. How, how long you been on the streets? Um, total together since 2011. When my dad died from San Antonio to here. But I've been in Oklahoma, been all over Texas. Um, I was just trying to survive. It's trouble. What's it like? It's hard, depending on the mood of others, especially yourself too, you know. You have to be in a good mood in order to get people to help you. You know, if you give bad vibes, nobody ain't gonna help. But the streets will swallow you. You'll lose time of day, even the day of the month, you know. You don't even know what day it is. You know, if you're coming or going. But if you're a survivor, you will survive. You have to be strong right here. Tell me some, uh some stories man that like either recently or whatever that like oh, yeah, some, some live story, action yeah. stories on the streets um i tell you, you know, behind the streets you get a lot of haters especially when when you have you know like clothes or food power wash you think you survive out here yeah with the girls but yeah i've been hit by a truck already went into the hospital but I got being shot too in the Stassini Woods. Uh, yeah, I've just been going through a lot of struggle here. Just trying to keep my head up high. And it's nothing bad that I'm doing. It's just being myself and helping others. And I like to work, so I do make my money. I wash windows, I post up somewhere. Wash windows, open the doors for people, and just be nice. And they bless my game. And then when I come back, I bless you know my community here. But lady, Austin's kind of making it hard for us. Yeah. They're taking things up from us and it's just hectic right now, you know. We're all frustrated, confused, don't know, waiting on people to come to house us. And it's just a lot out here right there. So. How did you wind up getting shot in the woods? For, okay, when I got hit by a truck, they were trying to get me out of the way because they wanted to take my stuff out. I had bikes. I used to work at Get you out of the way by like, kill you? Yeah, because they wanted what I had. I had everything. I had a good tent. I was over there off of South First and Stassini when everything started there. I had my power washer, the shower. We had our own to cook. We had a Predator waiting for power. We had it all. You know, we had everything. We did good. A generator, a generator. yeah. A generator. Hey, you know. We boxed, they couldn't take me. I took them one on one. Then I took out three and they couldn't. So they got fed up and shot me. That's what I did. So they they shot you in the upper leg like that? No, sir, they shot me in the scrotum and I lost the family here. Oh, shit. Yeah, I was scared. That you, you lost one or both? Both. One, 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 I lost one. Um, so they tried to kill you? Right. Um. Did you fall down? Oh, yes. And they were, were we, like... We're he's... in the woods. Where we fought. I fought those three, three guys. It was Jason, Chris, and Dean. Oh, we got him. We got him. Well, it's not that I have hands or anything, but, you know, we got banged up. And when they could in the morning, when the manager came out, they pulled out the guns and knives and everything. And we left. So I went to my other spot on Stassini's, uh, the Stassini apartments, and there's a side of woods right across from 7 Eleven. And at that time, they were serving, uh, like the, I guess it would be the, the game warden. And they'll come around at night say, hey, everybody get the hell out of here, running people out of there. So that night, same thing happened. We all went out looking, and I'm looking out, and I see somebody laying on the ground. And I'm like, hey, you know, show you something. Who are you? Uh, he was like, I'm the one who's going to shoot you. The next thing I know, I just see a fire, a shot, and like a sizzle. And I got a sharp pain on my scrotum. I went down. When I looked, I thought it was, I thought it was over. It was just blood everywhere, but it looked worse than what it was. Um, I Did crawled all the way to the apartment. So he shot you and took off? Yeah. Well, he was laying like by the, hey, where the street's at, and it goes down into the woods, right on top of the, of the tree line. He was laying there. When he shot me, then he took off. Everybody left me. Everybody left me hanging there. I was just laying on the ground. You know, like, 
I ain't know what to think. I think, you know what, they're gonna come and finish me off. They're gonna just finish me off right here. So I grabbed the nearest stick I can. I pulled myself up, my pool in the pool, which I got to the apartments and I started breaking all the windows until right? so somebody yelled. Because you needed help. I needed help, the ambulance came. And uh, yeah, by the time I got to the ambulance, I went to St. David's and they all knew me there. They just told me, but didn't you just leave here? Matter of fact, I got hit by a truck so hard that it threw me in a couple of yards. Nothing happened to the bike. I walked out with a fractured hip. Doctors were expecting crushed bones and uh, broken bones. But nothing yeah. Else. I was all bruised up right here. Yeah, I got two bones. Boom. Um, so hard that I've been hit before on bikes. Not that hard, but my bikes would be banged up. This one hit me so hard that the bike stayed normal. I was just the only one banged up. Uh, they took me in. I stayed there about two, three weeks and they let me out. I wasn't even healing yet until when I got shot. I was already fighting it. Because when I got back to camp, all my shit was gone. Yeah. Everything was gone. And they saying that somebody came and took it, but it turned out to be my own boy, D. I saw my bikes at the game room. And I asked, hey, bro, you know, that's my bike. The one who sold you. He said, hey, you primo. Sold it to me saying that you're in jail, that you need the money to get out. It was just a lie. So they took my generator, they took my power washer, all my bikes, took everything in my tent. So I started regulating. When I found the truth, started banging them up and that's how it leaded from one thing to another so after i got shot i came to the arch stayed there at the arch for a while well, i met my big brother here jay <laughs> good man right here um ever since then well well the media that i am you know if somebody takes something from me i'm gonna take care of business and something happened like that in there and kind of banged them up so they threw me out they well, me here. what happened yesterday on old tour from and oh, parker yeah. Well, I don't know what you say, I really don't want to say, but it has to do a lot with affiliation from my past. Uh -huh. And a certain thing happened in prison and certain steps were taken. And only certain individuals knew. Now there's one individual who's trying to get reinstated and he's trying to- He's trying to get reinstated with, back right, with his clique? With his clique, you know, trying, which, but it's already been watered down before once it's like, blood in, blood out, that's it. Once you're out, you can't come back in. But things change. So I guess before they even stay, they're gonna ask, you know, all the heads, you know, what's up with this guy? There's a few of us they knew they put on the side because, well, he caught feelings for another man. And that's a no-no. So threw him out and everything. Now we're over here in Austin, different story, different people, different structure, and he's trying to get back on top. So he got rid, I guess he got rid two. I can't find them on over there. I'm the third one that knows. And I believe that's why he did that. And I know Torvin Parker, he caught up. We talked, we chopped it up like he was a good friend and everything. We bought drinks. I turned around and talked to a female. Next thing I know, he's dumping some white stuff in, the, in my drink. So where the soda just like disintegrated, got ugly. So you caught him red-handed. red-handed. And that's he right. thought that you weren't going to see. see but you turned around and you seen him do see it. Him. And um, while another king came by, I, I offered him the drink. And he was going to drink it, but as soon as he put it, he stood straight up like, <laughs> like, you offered it to someone else too. So I grabbed you. I go, Kane gave me this. So I gave it back to him. I made sure I made him drink it, but he didn't want to drink it. Mm -hmm. I told him, drink it, drink it. He didn't want to, so finally, you know, he took a sip or two and he put it down. He kept calling it the laws were coming, the laws were coming. But at that time, during so the moment, he was saying he put it in your drink because the laws were coming? No, or? He didn't say, when I was asking him to, because I already had hit him, right? Boom, we were uh -huh. in a fight. And he's saying the laws were coming, laws were coming, right? Oh, uh, he was just trying to get... Try, but there was no yeah. laws. Everybody left. A few dudes were coming. So I, you know, I was preparing myself. They were trying to take my bike, which they did. They got it. But I couldn't do nothing about it. They took the bike. I slammed him. Some other guy showed up. They ripped me off. You know, so for some reason or another, they're all connected. So you think in order for him to get reinstated with his clique, they put a head out on you and he had to carry it out or something or uh, what? He He's doing it on his own self, personal reason, because they're going to come and ask for what to, they can bring him back up. And, well, they're going to tell me, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to say, no, he's been put to the side. Actually, he was put to the side for catching feelings for another man. Right. You see, that's why he can't come back up. Mm -hmm. you know, that's the only reason. But it should be documented, written down and everything, you know, but things change, things get lost. I really don't know how that goes. I ain't trying to get reinstated. I slipped back on my own for personal reasons, you know? So you never clicked up? 
I did kick up. Okay. I did. Uh, I was young. I went to jail very early, and well, I had a mouth, and I was going to fight. I needed some help. So, being in there, one thing leads to another. But once you learn and know the situation, it ain't no good for nobody. Because your family is family, not the ones that are in prison. And best thing you do is just stay sober. I tell you, every man out there in the world, if you stay by yourself, you have more advantage than any other man in the place. Why? Because they ain't even take the members. They're is to take care of the Solanos. That's the way it's supposed to be in TDC. Watch out over the, the, the ones that ain't affiliated with nobody. So best to stay on your own if you go in good time. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's best to don't do no time at all. Help the right man, whoever's in the right. Uh, how much time have you done? On my first term, I did a three on a five, and this term I did, no, I'm lying, I did a five on a seven, the first term, 1989 to 2007, and then I went to, 20 years later, I went back to PDC, I got two numbers on a possession charge, and I did a three on a five. And that was just, just to get off the streets, I just wanted room and board, I didn't think I was gonna get that many years. But you thought you were gonna just catch some county time, county or what? Time, <laughs> no, I don't do, I do years. I don't do they, weeks, they, weeks like, yeah. they throw you in the pen. They throw me in the pen. I'm also. You think it's because they profile you and shit? Yeah, I am. That they, they, they see your tattoos and, and and they're like, we're throwing him in the fucking level four or whatever. G five. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we, I'm red flag. They run my name through, it'll come out. It'll say uh, affiliation makes makes him out feel it, It's real. I've seen it before. Um, I tell you um, about that situation. Uh, I'm straight locked down. Even if I get a, a misdemeanor, I don't go to population anymore. I go straight to exit, segregation, 23 7. I come out one hour a day. Uh, in county jail, I don't even come out sometimes. Maybe just a shower, 15 minutes. They don't put you in gym pop. Have you, have you been to Del Valley? Okay, here in Del Valley? They put you in gym pop, yes, right? Travis County. Yeah. When I came here. GI called me in, they told me, look, you got no problems here, but as soon as your name crosses my desk for recruiting or any kind that has to do with any white collar affiliation, you're going back. So I paid the coup. Cool. Like you. you're going in the seg? Yeah, like lockdown. Mm -hmm. lockdown. So I paid the coup cool in Terrace County, is, I think it's one of the best counties. Yeah. It's a nice resort, all we need is a swimming pool. <laughs> I know, yeah, right? Yeah. That's all we need, but open bay units, good food. Uh, very respectable people. Mm -hmm. It's not like our county. Our county, like Roach Motel. Bear County, right? Bear I County. heard that it's just off the chain it's over there. Slop, food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sick. And and like each pod is like what gang you're in and shit mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah, second floor is all affiliations with all gangs. Uh, they got like Mexican mafia in one section, and they got. Uh, or the Hunters in one section, and they got the Ekis in another section. You know, we're all separated. And other than that, that's it. Yeah. But they don't mix us anymore. They don't mix us. Unless if one's getting out of hand, then they'll bring in to, to get mm -hmm. order in there for the laws. What's the, uh, what's it been like now that you've seen like fentanyl and K2 and all that, like, just take over the streets. Like, can you tell me about any experiences or, or shit that you've seen? Like, have you seen like oh, any overdoses? Yeah, so, I had brought a few people back from Fentanyl. You know, it's an ugly feeling. I mean, it's not like ODing on heroin or something. Because heroin, you know, you can bring them back with cold water, slapping them up, or sometimes salt water or something, right? But Fentanyl, I don't know. Fentanyl something different. Cause when they come back, they coming back saying something like they're coming for me, they're coming for me, or they're getting me, they're getting me. Or... They get paranoid from the Narcan. Is that what it is? Yeah, I, I've been Narcan like fucking twelve times, and it feel it it sucks. <laughs> I've never been Narcan. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not an innocent or nothing. I do have you know faults, but I'm not a junkie. If I pick something up, see. See, when I was in my heroin binge, it was just heroin. How long did that last? Four years. I lived in four years from 2011 to 2014. See, my father died on Christmas Eve, 2011. That was a good guy. 
I went to college, I went to school, everything. I was working, I'm a chef and everything. They hit me a week later that my father was dead. We were gonna watch the game on a Sunday and they had asked me and it just hit me hard. And from that day on, I went straight to the rig. And when I first got sick, I gave myself the word. I promised myself I'll never get sick again. I started selling, moving, and that that heroin took you for a ride, right? Oh, Those man. four years must have been insane, right? Cause uh, shit, I was on it for like twelve, and I was running hard. It took me to some places I never thought I'd go. You know, it took me some places and did some things like you go to my house. I had no metal. I scrapped it off for heroin. Nothing valuable. It was a shooting gallery in my house. People come and playing around, rigs, everything. Yeah. I got fed up one day. Sick. Um, I got so bad that I had to fix at work. And I was working for the Shark House in yeah. of America and very catching on. Because I was doing good, you know, I would do one fix, go to work, come back, do another fix, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, three shots a day, a whole rig, 80 units, a whole gram. I'll do an 80 pack a day, uh, three grams, you know. But I guess my tolerance, little, little by little, yeah. I had to fix at work. Once I knew I had to take shit to work, that's it. So I stopped. How did you wind up kicking your habit? I came one day. I had no friends. I had nothing. I had one shot left. And I started cutting. And I said to myself, you know, I was sick and tired of being sick. As soon as I said that, I felt the light. I tried some boxing. It didn't work. I tried methadone. I tried uh, weed and where I tried even sex, I tried everything anymore. But the only thing that worked for me was cold turkey. What I did is I shut down my house, my dad's house. I went to my mom's, locked myself in the room, took off all my clothes, got a beast towel full of water, put a fan in front of the AC, and just stayed there. I went through hell and back. For how long? Three uh, weeks? No, I'm gonna say 90 days or more. Wow. Because after I broke and got back in together, I got the sundown syndrome. That's what I call it. During the day, you're good, but as soon as the sun starts coming, you start getting your, well, I guess y'all call it, uh... You're, you start getting your fucking feelers out, like, is, it, it's time to get high, it's yes. nighttime, it's time to, yes. it's time to go out, yeah. But when I defeated that demon, it manifested too. The heroin manifested, and mine came out to be like a shaggy dog, you know? mm -hmm. and it was breathing and breathing, and I confronted him. I told him, I see it, I'm done, and since then, I ain't even touched it. I will. There is feeble, and I'm with the female, and if she's. Doing but it. you got to be careful because you ain't got a tolerance no more. Yes. Right. So what do you do? Like a nickel or a dime or I something? I don't do it at all unless I'm with the female. Right. Right. So but how much do you do when you're with your female? I'll like, water it down. Like a fucking nickel. Maybe like a nickel and twenty dollars, twenty of water. Do you just muscle it? Yeah. But no, no. I, I you put it in the vein. Mm -hmm. Shit, mm -hmm. I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You must have, well, you Oh, did. yeah, yeah. I, I, I ran out of veins and I had to start muscling. Yeah, I had a and then I, I got clean for like two and a half years, and then I started doing it again. I started, and this is when fentanyl started coming out around, and uh, I started muscling, and then I, my addiction got worse, so I started, started shooting, and man, I was overdosing like. At the end, I went on like a three month heroin binge when I relapsed. The last month I was overdosing like two times a week, you know? And and then I got on the buprenorphine because I had a lot going on at the time. I, I was like- I a couple of times too myself, but when, on my last year on my bench, when I learned about ice, I think I was 27, 28. I didn't know you were very, I thought you just snorted. Then I learned you can smoke it, then I learned you can shoot it, then I learned you can eat it, drink it. Um, I started shooting the speedball, I started doing Xanax. Xanax, heroin, ice, and coke. I would call those real Belichis, the ginger Belichis. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. That's so, how uh, I used to get down too. I went down a couple of times, about eight times in that year. They were going to put me right into a... Uh, state hospital for suicide watch. Mm -hmm. uh, but well, you ever been to HSB and uh, the health services building in Del Valley? Mm, no. That they, they put you on 15 minute visual suicide homicide watch. No. That's when you 
when you go in acting crazy and yeah, all that I, shit. They put you right there in front and everything. They just watch you. Yeah. yeah. yeah we all do that. Yeah. Do that. yeah. <laughs> when you first get their orientation. Yeah. But, uh, other than that, I've been to Oklahoma. I got my senior finisher. Uh, I took that up, trade up there in Oklahoma, Indian home, Oklahoma. I was up there at the age of 15 to 17. Yeah. What else is right now? Track of all trades. I love working from rooftop to landscape. If I don't know something, I'll learn it and I'll perfect it. I try to do it. I can well, show you them better. Time. Hell yeah. Uh, what do you say in like a few months? We'll, we'll do a... A new interview. Sound good? Yes, sir. Thanks, Santos. You the man, man. <laughs> Try to live better, not bitter. Try to live better, not bitter.